my youtube family welcome back to the channel i hope y'all are having another good day it feels good to be making a video y'all so today's going to be a diesel vlog it has been a minute since i did one i know so make sure you smash the thumbs up button the like button because this video is going to be packed and loaded with tons and tons of information for my 68 rfe owners or soon to be 68 rfe owners or if you just randomly just want to know some some stuff about the transmissions that come on these uh rams these rams and the dodge rams the 2500 3500s okay so Long story short, we I can sit here all day and talk about why the 68 has a bad rap, why the 68 RP is bad, why is it in, inferior to other transmissions. I can talk about it, but guess what? There's more than enough information out on the media, out in social media and all that stuff, talking about that already. What I'm here for today and what I'm going to do today is talk about things that you can do to extend the longevity of your trans or make your trans more reliable, more stout, all that good stuff, all right? Now, it's cool because this video is going to be it's called the top three miles for your 68 RFE, but it really comes into two, uh, how do you say? It's going to be two options, two routes, okay? You can combine the routes. You can do one route over the other. You can mix and match between each route, but I think you guys are going to really, really get a good benefit out of this, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get the video started. Once again, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what y'all think at the end of the video, and I appreciate it. All right, all right. Uh, no, this is not a... It's not a it's not an advertisement. I'm just using a bottle to help keep the paper from blowing away. So check it out, y'all. So on this piece of paper, I went ahead and wrote down two channels. We got the left side, which is going to be under fifteen hundred dollars top three mods, and then we have over fifteen hundred top three mods. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and tear up trans tuning valve body and a deep dish pan. Okay. And then on this side, you can see here over fifteen hundred. We got regearing overdrive drum entire trans build and then we have some extras down here that's going to be bonus at the end okay all right y'all so first thing we're going to talk about is trans tuning for so we're going to talk about things under fifteen hundred dollars you can do for your 68 rfe that's going to cost under fifteen hundred dollars top three things i have number one is going to be trans tuning okay uh if you have a third gen the best way to get your trans tune is going to be either via uh, H&S Minimax with the Trans Unlock Tuning, or you can buy Trans Tuning from a company like RevMax, and they'll, you'll send in your TCM, they'll program it, send it back, and you're set, okay? Uh, if not, you 4th Gen Bubbles, you guys got EFI Live you can use, Easy Link, all sorts of crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? So those are all the different options you have for Trans Tuning, but Trans Tuning is highly encouraged, you guys, because it increases your line pressures, and it's going to change your shift patterns and, sh and the shift strategies for... Your transmission one of the biggest killers or biggest downfalls these transmissions have is when it comes from the factory it doesn't have the best tune on it uh, in terms of uh, the transmission tune um, and you throw a tuner at it even if it's a mild 30 horse tune or something small like that the trans just does not like it it's always hopping gears it doesn't know what gear it wants to stay in that's a very common uh, phrase people will use when, when describing how the 68 shifts and drives it seems inconsistent and it's just not solid trans tuning will take care of that to a good extent it's not going to completely eliminate it but it will definitely help it but the biggest kicker with trans tuning is the added line pressure these transmissions come super under pressure from the from the factory my personal opinion is because the valve bodies are garbage uh from factory from mopar you know what i'm saying they can't handle a lot of pressure i mean i, th I think your duramax or your allisons run at like 250 300 psi the power strokes are around that same line pressure um but yeah so that's my that's my thought on it uh trans tuning is going to be the number one thing so let's say you get your truck tuned and deleted and you have no aspirations of ever running hot tunes nothing like that but you still want to do something for the trans number one is going to be trans tuning you cannot go wrong there pay the extra money whether it's 200 300 400 bucks pay the extra money to get trans tuning on top of that if you're that guy that likes to experiment you can actually change your shift points and shift patterns and when the trans locks up and you can also, depending on who's tuning the trans, you can get third gear lockup, which is awesome when you're towing, big stuff, okay? So trans tune is number one under 15. Next one we got is the valve body, okay, which kind of pairs, pairs with the uh, trans tuning. So the valve bodies from Chrysler, they're garbage, basically. They're casted. Um, I've heard they did little upgrades throughout the 4th gen and going into the 5th gen, they modified it slightly, but for the most part, it's still bad. The biggest problem with it is that it has flexing in the channel plates, okay? It can't hold it can't hold high line pressure. So from the factory, your 68 RFE is going to have roughly 160, 170 line pressure. Uh, it can't even handle that. The separator plate they use, and I've, I've heard that they've upgraded the separator plates in them as the years went on, but... The separator plate, which is a gasket between your valve body, which sandwiches them together up the lower and upper plate, 
it can't even handle the stock pressure uh, the, and your valve body so if you want to put it into concept I'm not gonna say your valve body is the brain of the transmission because you got a TCM obviously but think of it kind of like the heart or not even a heart but that'd be the pump but let's just say it's like a second brain for the transmission your valve body dictates a lot in terms of how your truck drives and shifts okay so what happens is a lot of cats will do the upgraded billet channel plate whether you go from a company like dnj ats revmax uh there's some good companies out there that make excellent billet channel plates uh that is a very very good upgrade and what comes with that because again trans tuning now we're going back to number one what comes with that is you can run higher line pressure there's certain trans bills out there or valve bodies out there that can take 250 or higher line pressure which is good because the more line pressure you have the more pressure is being applied to your clutch packs in the transmission which means you're going to have more crisp firm solid shifts which is what you want you don't want these weak flaring shifts shift flare is a big thing on stock 68 rfes i know you if you've ever had a bad 68 y'all know what i'm talking about um and the valve body can help with that to an extent, okay, if you're just doing the valve body. Uh, but valve body is a definitely, I put valve body number two, but it can go either way, one or two. But if you pair tuning with a valve body, it's pretty solid. Last one I have for under 1500 bucks is going to be a deep dish pan. The deep dish pan, I kind of just threw that one in there just because I was trying to think of something else under 1500 that's like really good for these trans. But deep dish pan is good in two reasons. One, it braces the case of the transmission housing, so it's, it's less prone to crack because these transmission housings apparently are not that thick in compared to other transmissions. Therefore, they flex under a lot of a lot of torque, a lot of power being put through them. Uh, there's been stories of people cracking their cases, which I know you can do that on any transmission, but I guess it's more prone on the 68 RFEs so a trans pan a deep dish pan will help with that and on top of that it'll add more fluid which means having more fluid in the trans means you can cycle more fluid through the cooler which means you should uh, have a lower transmission temperature okay I have a PPE deep dish trans pan on my truck my transmission it, it fluctuates depending on the heat outside but usually on, a, on like summer during the summer it'll stay anywhere between 155 and get all the way up to about 170 180 it just depends if i'm in a lot of stop and go traffic and it's like 95 degrees outside it'll creep up to about 180 185 which is it's it's, it's fine that's you know that's a that's a good uh temp to be at <laughs> i got tongue twisted okay next one we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and shift over to the over 1500 uh upgrades for your 68 rfe okay so the first one we have number one and this is my personal best i don't fourth gen bubbles i gotta look up the fifth gens because i don't know if ram or chrysler changed it but if you got a fortune you need to do this re-gear your truck yes that's right that is the number one mod you want to do if for over 1500 dollars check it out the fortunes the fortunes for some reason ram went from 373 gears which is actually a pretty standard good gear ratio uh, for these trucks down to a 342 gear with the concept of oh it's going to run at a lower rpm on the highway which means better fuel mileage yes but every other application or every other every other since uh, instances is it's not it's not good so for my cats that don't tow but let's say you want to run on tune five it's not good why because your transmission is taking a bigger load now and less load off the axle more load on the tranny a lot of, and I was just talking to my boy Eric about this. For some reason, I always see a lot of cats that talk about the 68 RP and they blew it. A good bit of them come from from Fortune Dues, and I think, in my personal opinion, I think that is one of the number one uh, attributing causes besides what we already talked about in terms of the 68 RP blowing up is that they undergeared the crap out of these trucks on the Fortunes. I'm not sure if the Fifth Gens are the same. I think they went back to 373s or 410s. Um, but like my truck stock came with 373 gears. I upgraded it to 430 gears. And I'm gonna be real with you, in my honest opinion, I think regearing the truck is what's kept my transmission alive as long as it is. Because as some of y'all might know, all my transmission has is trans tuning with the HNS trans tuner. So I'm running 200 PSI line pressure. Uh, ATS valve body separator plate. I have a stock valve body, but I have the ATS separator plate, and then I got the deep dish PPE trans pan, and I'm it, and I'm on 40s, 24 by 14 forge wheels, 10 inch lift. Like uh, it still it still goes. Now is it perfect? No, it's not, but it runs. And and, and you know I get on it and I stay in tune four, tune five. You know, and I got all sorts of mods and stuff done in my truck. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you don't check out the channel, my previous videos. Um, but that's in my opinion. I think regearing it. For over 1500 bucks, you and some of y'all might be able to do it. One thing I forgot to mention this is all if you pay somebody, okay? So the prices I named is if you're paying somebody to do the labor because I know not everybody does stuff theirself. So this is like if you're taking it to a shop, if you're doing it yourself, you're actually going to be 
lower. So like regearing it, I paid the shop to regear my truck. I paid about 1200 bucks. The reason why I said over 15 is because depending on where you are in the country, you might pay more for labor and all that type of stuff, okay? But regearing is definitely good. Now before you jump the gun saying, what do I, what should I regear the truck to? The best thing you can do is call two companies. You can call Nitto, or not Nitto, uh, Nitro Gears, which I have Nitro Gears, or you can call a company called East Coast Gear Supply, which is like the number one gear supplier in the country. If, especially East Coast Gear Supplier, if you call them and say, hey man, I got this truck, this transmission, um, and you know, this is it, they will actually recommend what gears you should put on your truck, and they'll ask you for your tire size too. If you're running 37s on stock gears, you're already setting yourself up for failure. The only time I probably would recommend keeping stock gears is if you're running the grandpa stock tires. If you're running anything besides that, you need to re-gear that sucker. And even if you got stock tires on it, and let's say you go from 342s three, to 373, it is a noticeable difference. Like your mileage should go up a little bit, EGT should go down a little bit because what's gonna happen is your, your engine is gonna run at a higher RPM, which means it's exhausting all of the EG, or it's exhausting all of the exhaust gases out faster. Um, between the compounds and regearing my truck, very, very, very rarely do I go over a thousand degrees uh, in terms of EGTs. Like if I'm on a hill on the highway and I get on it, yeah, I'll hit like 1100 maybe for a second or two and then it'll drop right back down. So definitely regearing is number one. Number two I have for over $1,500 is gonna be the overdrive drum, okay? So basically, long story short, 68 RFE, six gears, six, it has six gears, right? Your fifth and bugs out here. Your fifth and sixth gear are considered overdrive gears. By the time you are in, I believe it's, I don't know if it's a fifth or a sixth. I'm pretty sure it's a six. You are in a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning whatever the engine's putting out is directly what is being put in, put out via the transmission. Uh, with that being said, if you have a lot of power, mods, all that stuff, the stock overdrive drum is it can't hold it. It cannot. Uh, there's videos on YouTube showing people breaking down 68 hour fees, and when you compare the stock overdrive drum to like let's say an aftermarket Sonex, uh, I think it's called the Sonex. Uh, I can't remember the name, but Sonex makes one that's a smart drum. It's actually really good. Uh, it's night and day, and they've patented their technology and stuff. Uh, overdrive drum is a big, big one. Reason being is because that's when most people burn their transmissions up, right? You're cruising, you're locked up in six gear, some cat comes next to you trying to challenge you, size you up, you're like, oh, bet, let's do this. Next thing you know, you wail on it, six gear is probably gonna unlock and drop down to fifth gear, and fifth gear is not ready for all that power that's about to get shoved through it, and you burn up your overdrive drums. Uh, it's very common on these trucks is to burn up the fifth and sixth gear overdrive drums, or they end up putting into like a limp mode. So, overdrive drum number two is going to be best. Now, again, that's if you're paying somebody, if you're paying somebody, and, and I'm, my third one pretty much kind of falls back on this one, which is going to be an entire trans build. So obviously, if you're getting an entire trans build, even if you're just doing a bone stock 68, it's going to cost more than 1500 Like 1500 is probably just the labor, you know what I'm saying? But number three would be an entire trans build, okay? Now, here's the kicker. People have the misconception that you have to, it's not worth rebuilding a 68 RFE. That's not true. It is not, it's far from true, okay? This is not 2010, it's not 2008, it's not 2007 when it first came out and everybody was all, didn't know what was going on. You can get you, and there's a lot of good builders out there now too, but you can get you a solid built 68 RFE that will hold your power, it, it will handle your stuff. If you're that cat that just wants, if you got, let's say you got a fortune, you got a 68 RFE, you haul bobcat, skid steers, you use your truck for work and money, don't let no mechanic sit here and tell you, and let's say all you got is a tune and delete, stock tune, but a delete it. Don't let no shop or mechanic say you need to 48 swap it. Don't. If he tells you that, walk away, because that means he doesn't know what he's doing with the 68 RFE. Find a reputable 68 RFE trans builder, okay? Um, most of your trans builders for 68 RFEs won't warrant the horsepower more than 700 horsepower. That's like their cap, and they're like, if you make more than that, we ain't going to cover, which 700 horsepower is a lot, especially for a daily driver that's used for work. Um, but yeah, find a reputable builder. If, if, if you're making 400 horsepower, 500 horsepower, and they're telling you you need a 48 swap it or an Allison swap it, don't go to them. Find somebody that can build a trans because you can get you a stout 500 horsepower rated, uh, 600, 700 horsepower rated 68 RFE that will last you a good bit of time and it's probably going to have good warranties. One of the top companies in terms of the 68 RFE right now is RevMax and they work with a lot of local builders such as Red Horse Motorsports, my boy Dallas over there. They work with a lot of local builders that build these transmissions and a lot of the parts these guys are using come from them. Why? Because RevMax puts so much research and development into their product to where they just feel, they, it just works. It works, they're confident about it. 
they and and it's products there's it's proven it's proven i mean my boy dallas he broke the uh horsepower record for 68 rfe in texas i think he's in denton or yeah denton texas and he broke the record there's videos on youtube and all that type of stuff he was featured on firepunk but yes trans build okay so don't do that or don't sit there and just think you need a 48 swap in my personal opinion unless you plan on sending this truck down the drag strip or you're just that crazy person that just constantly wells in your truck and you're just like i need something that's going to handle it i got some news for you ain't no race transmission gonna last forever i'm just sorry and and for my dudes out there that do race y'all know the race game is not cheap shit breaks all the time okay so don't think because you get a 48 re swap you're you got a bulletproof trans that will handle everything for 400,000 miles that's not how it works you're gonna get a 48 r a 48 re swap it'll, it'll, it'll do what you want but for how long nobody knows and that's why a lot of times companies don't warranty race transmissions and stuff anything racing related because the it can go out any moment okay so a couple things last minute uh, let's see. Let's see. I got case brace. So for fi under fifteen hundred bucks, case brace. Uh, I think Sonax and AT uh, ATS makes a case brace. Basically, it's a case brace that sits over the top of the transmission, and it just helps reinforce it in conjunction with a deep dish pan. Over here for fifteen hundred bucks, we got billet input shaft. That's also going to be you know be tying in with the entire trans build because you got to think by the time you're doing an overdrive drum you're already your balls deep in the trans the trans is pretty much like 95 percent broken down okay uh, you might as well get the trans the whole get you a rebuild kit rebuild it so we got billet input shaft uh, and trans cooler torque converter I didn't even finish writing that <laughs> and we got torque converter okay the kicker with the billet input shaft a lot of people think that this is like pertinent on these transmissions. The stock billet or the stock input shafts on the 68 RFEs are actually not that bad. One of the good things about it that's good is that because it's not billet, when it breaks, it's a clean break. Vices, when you break a billet shaft, it sends billet shards all through your transmission. Um, which means, so for instance, you can break a stock input billet shaft and just change the input shaft, or a stock non billet input shaft, and you can just change that most times. When these go out, nine times out of ten, you're probably going to be changing out some more stuff, including the pump and et cetera, okay? Trans cooler, camera decided to overheat. All right, so where I left off at, uh, trans cooler, 68 RFE is not really known for being a hot running transmission compared to like the 48. It is electronically controlled, so that will help in reducing heat, but it's still good to have a trans cooler. Uh, anytime you can, heat is most likely your number one killer when it comes to uh, transmissions besides the stuff i already talked about but um yeah it, anytime you can keep a cooler transmission like obviously you want it to get to operate in temp but if you can keep it at the low side of operating temp for its entire life you will damn near 100 percent increase the life and longevity of the transmission that's just that's just physics whatever the terminology is in terms of the study of that stuff that's just how that works torque converter all right People think that they need to jump in and, and, and get a torque converter. Uh, a very common thing that happens with torque converters is that people just don't understand how to pair the right torque converter with the right truck, with the right build, with all that stuff. They think it's as simple as, oh, I want a stage, I want a, a triple disc torque converter. Ye do they know a triple disc, a triple disc torque converter is probably going to snap their input shaft, which is going, and if they got a billet input shaft, it's probably going to cause a lot more headache than what they want, or they don't get the right stall and they don't like the way the truck drives, okay? So what I encourage all you guys is do your research, okay? Do your research. Talk to experts. I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy that likes to do this shit on the side. <laughs> Talk to the expert, the professionals, and get right answers. If you feel like it's not right, go to somebody else. It's as simple as that, okay? Um, but yes, you can do a torque converter. The torque, the stock torque converters on these trucks aren't that bad. Uh, it's, you know, it's not like a 7.3 power stroke or on the 48s where I know on the, four, I think it was a 48s or 47 REs. And the torque converter was like the Achilles heels for those transmissions. But, uh, they're actually not bad on these trucks. They, they, they put out, the, they, they convert the torque. So, uh, everything I talked about, everything else I talked about is really the killer or the dial, you know, whatever you want to call it, the dial pin or whatever, nail in the coffin for these transmissions, y'all. Uh, but at the end of the day, you guys, I'm going to end this video out on this note. I, I'm trying to not make this a super long video is this. What is the number one contribution to transmissions failing or 68 RFEs failing? The user. That's really what it is. It's the user. Ignorance. Okay. So not knowing, you know what I'm saying? That is the number one failure in my opinion. Uh, people not understanding how these transmissions work. Do not try to run 250 line pressure on a stock valve body. You're gonna, don't do that. 
You're, you're going to blow some shit up. All right. Don't do pulls every day in fifth and sixth gear locked up in overdrive. You're going to burn up your clutch packs and burn up your overdrive drums in a heartbeat. Okay. Boosted launches on a stock trans. Probably shouldn't do that. Or you're running, you got 342 gears, stock trans, and you're running 40, 40 inch, 42 inch tires. Like these things that we want and stuff like that, we contribute to the destruction of the transmission, if that makes sense. And, and you can probably say, well, if that's the case, why is that these dudes with the power strokes and the Duramax can do this, but we can't? And it's like, hey, man, that's just, a, you got to pick your poison. You know what I'm saying? You want a good engine or you want some shit that's going to take you a day and a half to take out an injector? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to pick what you want. And when you pick this lifestyle, these are some of the things you have to be cautious with. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know that and they don't understand that. And then your right foot is also a number one enemy, too. You just have to know how to drive these trucks. When at the end of the day, man, I get on my truck. I don't baby my truck. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I don't. I don't floor it and smoke it and just burn it up. But like, I drive it just normal. Like, I, I'm. I don't know how to explain it better than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, take it for what you want, you guys. I would love to hear your opinions. If you made it this far, please smash the thumbs up, like button. I hope this video helps you guys out so much. All my new diesel owners out there that are just their your brains are sponges and you want to absorb some stuff. I hope this video gave you what you want. And I hope you guys stick around, join the channel more down the road. Last thing I'm going to leave y'all with is if you made it this far, I want you to get down in the comments. And I want you to comment your favorite everything diesel video. Do that for me. Comment your favorite video. And I, I obviously I'm going to respond, all right? So thank you guys so much for joining the channel. I hope to see you guys soon. It feels good for filming again, all that good stuff. So until next time, y'all, take care. Peace out and be safe.